Good morning, YouTube. Welcome in. It's good to be back. And today we've got an absolutely beautiful system. Today we're building in the AP201 from Asus. That's it, right. That's the brand new Prime. Well, actually, not brand new. It's been around for about six or seven months. But we had really built with it here on the channel. It's an MATX case that supports a 360 millimeter AIO as well as a full size ATX power supply. It's really compact. It looks really good. On top of that, we're adding eight RGB fans in this little thing today. It's gonna look absolutely killer. We're trying out the brand new Thermoite Phantom Evo uh, dual tower cooler. It looks absolutely stunning. These fans kind of have that mix of that P28 from Lean Lee as well as the AL120 kind of vibe, but it's something completely different and it's coming in from Thermoray. Let us know down below in the comments. We've got the 700 X3D paired with the 4070 Super coming in with a beautiful all blacked out founders card. Make sure to that like button down below. Let us know what you think about this build with a comment. What do you want to see us build with next here on the channel? If you'd like to see, make sure to that subscribe button as well as we have more beautiful builds coming over here to the YouTube channel. Want to catch us live on a raw like it is right now as I butcher this intro because I've been gone on vacation for last week. You come over any Monday, Wednesday, or Friday to our Twitch channel at twitch.tv. We stream around 10 a.m. Eastern and we hope to see you soon. Let's talk about the main news. Yes, Deep Cool is no longer selling in the U.S. That being said, we do have some remaining stock. Deepcool is going to warranty all of their products. Global will warranty it. America's obviously right now is going to be on their shutting down. American headquarters temporarily. Yes, they sold products into Russia. The U.S. is dead. Bloop. Nope. Don't like that. They sanctioned uh, Deepcool from selling inside the United States. All the existing inventory that's already bought by Amazon and Newegg and S system integrators like ourselves, we are allowed to sell still and uh, move through our, our inventory. After that, we will be transitioning uh, temporarily. All of our liquid coolers will be going to Leanly, and all of our air coolers will be going to Thermalright. Um, that's just gonna be in the meantime as Deepcool goes through it, because it's not a bad product, it's not bad products. So if you have a Deepcool product, you don't have to worry about it. So still gonna, the global, the global will still warranty it. So we still have a lot of respect. A lot of the guys in the marketing team did so much for the community. No, no harm, I don't have any ill will against them. I really hope everything gets cleared up so they can get back into selling great products because they have for so long. Now I'll go to those Asus Tough PSUs looking to replace the 650 HX. Uh, they're very good. They're very good. So um, the Asus 850Gs that we're using today, all the Asus G power supplies, which we've actually kind of moved to as we can keep them available because honestly, they're the best, in my opinion, for the price right now. I think they are the best available, and I'll say why. Um, they are made by Great Wall, which Great Wall is one of the better OEMs. Great Wall, Seasonic, and uh, Super Flower, in my opinion, are the three best OEMs. Shortly followed by Channel Well, which like MSI and Thermaltake are using right now for their or CWT or Channel Well technologies. Um, they're probably the, the next tier. I feel like the S tier is really like Seasonic and Great Wall right now. Um, they make the best power supplies. Uh, apparently Montec's new power supplies are made by Seasonic, which is really, really nice to hear about. We might be using some of those as we were using Deepcool, which Deepcool had a blend of uh, uh, some actually really high-end Channel Well and some Seasonics in their inventory. We'll be moving the deep cool power supplies away as well and probably be going to some Montech with Seasonic being the OEM behind them, which really good. They got really stellar reviews from like Gamers Nexus and some other vendors. But these, these tough power supplies are fantastic. It is a great wall 10 year power supply coming from Asus with their uh, reliability. Um, the tough line looks really good. On top of that, it's got braided cables. So you can get braided cables with this one, really nice. Let's get started on today's build. Again, we have a 700X3 going down and in on the socket. Let me get that all opened up. We have the beautiful B650M motherboard from MSI. Uh, and you're like, since why didn't you use an Asus board with an Asus power supply, an Asus case? I said, we're going for a blacked out look. And unfortunately, without getting the beautiful board that is the dual dim crosshair they had, which is MATX, Asus doesn't really have a lot of really strong MATX offerings that are all blacked out. Um, so all these, as I think it's only prime boards right now. Uh, and I didn't really want that kind of vibe, I wanted really blacked out. And the mortar bo boards and the Tomahawk boards have always been extremely killer looking in terms of all blacked out and sleek aesthetics. So we're going to the blacked out mortar board. We have got blacked out RAM going into the system in the, the, T, or the Team Vulcan. I wanted that all blacked out with the RGB subtle, the RG, RGB accents from today's Thermal Right fans. And you'll see, they'll look really, really clean. All right, let's pop this open, get everything down and in. The socket, socket looks great, good to see. Again, 700 extra needs today's CPU. It is good to see a lot of build. Yeah, except we took, we had some, we had a, a little slow June than usual. I mean, it, it's not slow like it was, I mean, last year, it's slower than last year, because last year we had a like, launch of new cards, I mean, like 40, 60, I think it was like 40, 60 Ti time. So it was slower than last year, but 10, two years ago when they had no product, it was about the same, it was on point. 
So like, it's, it's a crazy thing is like in our industry, like we have like, it's kind of like a roller coaster. You're gonna have months where it's slower based on every other year when there's product launch. It was just like the other two years ago, so. Quieter month, not as many bills on the channel, which I apologize guys, but you know, sometimes it's how it is. But we're uh, ramping up, actually had a pretty strong start to July, which is good. All right, let's get our NVMe drive down and in. We have a two terabyte drive today. Two terabyte drive, again, we have the KC3000, tried and true. I would say if, any, if I work with any company that has the best warranty for the system integrator, it's been Kingston. I'd say Kingston and MSI have been the best warranties we've ever had. We have a bad drive. I report it right to the, the drive, the, right to our rep, and they overnight us drives for our customers. Um, that is, and they overnight on the house. That's how good Kingston is as a, as a brand. Got our drive down and in. Let's get our standoff back in place. Next, look at this cooler. So today we're using, again, the brand new, I'd say it's pretty new. I think the Thermoid just came out with this cooler. Um, it's phenomenal. It's beautiful. The fans are ridiculously good. Uh, we're, gonna get some th we're gonna get some more testing on it. This is the new Spirit Evo. Again, since we're moving away from the deep cool temporarily, we're gonna move into the, using the Evo as one of our primary coolers. Uh, again, we can always swap out fans if necessary, but these fans look really good, and we're gonna tie them in with these TL. They are very similar fans here in the TL, uh, the TL S112s. These fans they use on here, I believe they call them the... They don't really have the, but they're a fluid dynamic bearing, new version of the fluid dynamic bearing fan. I don't know if they have the name of the fans on here, but they're very, very good. Um, but they're very similar to the fans we have in here. Um, there's a bit more subtle on the cooler. Packaging has been rock solid too from Thermaltake. You look at that, how they have everything with a high density foam. So they don't worry about cooler damage. These fans, all right, let's look at this. I gotta show you this. This is the fan right here. I'm gonna go grab the P28 fan from Lean Lee and you tell me if you see any differences. P28 is one of the best fans right now on the market in terms of performance. So close. So instead of they just put a cover, they put a little cover over here over their bearing because they're doing a liquid, uh, probably a hydro bearing as well. Or fluid dynamic, fluid dynamic hydro bearing. They're so similar. Yeah, the, the, the thermal rights have been really well priced. I will say they're really well priced. Like these, this cooler, I think is in the $40 range it should out, actually outperform the AK620. We'll see on some tests. And then we have these, these are actually some really nice budget uh, ring fans from Thermoray. I think a pack of these are like $20 for three pack, which is really good. Uh, there's a magnetic assist bearing in these fans too, by the way. To see a magnetic based fan in a 20-ish dollar price range is pretty crazy. You're gonna remove the factory bracket and install standoffs, which makes sense. We've got our clips for the fans all here, which we'll need. So they take off the factory clip mounting clips and they retain the back plate, which is pretty standard in a lot of air coolers right now in AM4, AM5. Go, one, two, three, four, down, on. All right, and these go like so. Getting pre-threaded, we'll hand tighten them here in a minute and over torque it at all with a electric shear. This is a low torque, of course, as you guys know. Just gonna like get it down in and we'll hand tighten. There we go, all torqued down, nice and secure for our brackets. Next is gonna be our RAM. Again, today we have the fantastic Vulcan, which is a really low profile. This cooler is pretty good size. So I wanted to have a low profile RAM to go with this one. The Vulcan is a really low profile, probably the most low profile, either that or the um, T-Create. It's the same exact RAM, it's the timing, it's the black, all blacked out, looks really good for the team RAM here today. Matches this board almost aesthetically perfect. So we're gonna go down and in with this. There's one and two, there's 32 gigs of 6,000 CL30, which works great with the 7800X3D. There we go. Everything is set up on the motherboard, so we're gonna get ready to get the case out here. Again, the B650 mortar motherboard coming in from MSI. Uh, we have a 7800X3 down on the socket. Our standoffs are in place with a new Spirit Evo that we'll be utilizing here momentarily. Uh, the NVMe drive today we have is a KC3000 drive coming in from Kingston, two terabytes down here in the primary slot. And we have 30, 32 gigs of 6,000 CL30 ready to find it from Team Force and the, and the Team Group the T-Force Vulcan RAM, which looks absolutely stunning with this motherboard and aesthetic. That being said, it's time to get the case out today. Again, we have the AP201 from Asus. Micro ATX, high mesh, high airflow case. We built a very similar case, this, I think, once on the channel. I don't think we built with this one on the channel before, and that was in the VTrue version of this case. VTrue and Asus have a very similar case. A reason I like this one a little bit more than the VTrue. It is a little bit more expensive, but they package it very nicely. I'll show you here why in just a second. They use a high density reinforced, cardboard reinforced uh, packaging around this case, which is from a system integrator. This is one of the best shipping ones you can possibly have. You can see the high density foam reinforced with cardboard. So when it ships to a customer, it's absolutely killer. It's, it's very durable. This is it. This is a little beauty. Look at this little thing. I light it up, 
on RGB. It's gonna look really good. Let's get working on this case. Let's get started by getting the motherboard down and in. We're gonna remove this rear fan first because we're not utilizing this. We're gonna have that RGB aesthetic all the way through. All right, down and in we go with this motherboard. You see a dual ray there. All right, get the front close up. Mini and micro, but amazing little system here. We're gonna get our first three fans in. We're gonna work on our bottom fans. And then we're gonna go to our power supply. And then we'll finish our top fans last. The great thing about these fans, again, I, I told you they are a um, blue dynamic bearing, which is also magnetically assisted. So they're really good value for these fans. They look really good. Nothing crazy, but it's gonna look really good with the system here. They are daisy chain. There's gonna be a lot of wiring. Whew. A lot of wiring. All blacked out. We're gonna have the subtle RGB on the Thermalrite fans and the, uh, the Asperit Evo cooler. We're going air. Obviously, you know, the red rate, you know, you don't really need too much on the 700 XRD when gaming. I think it's pretty chill with a decent cooler. Power LED, power switch. HD audio, and then we're gonna finish up with our fans. One. All right, next we have to work on the power supply, which we have this little cage right here. Fun part begins. Getting this power supply out and getting it in. All the cables that it comes with. Yeah, today we have the 850G from Asus and their tough ATX 3.0 power supplies. Fantastic power supplies. Cables out that we need today are EPS1, PS2, Volvo High Power, and then our 24 pin main. There it is. All these other cables into the bag. They're all our cables. For our power supply, it's gonna be the fun part, getting it in here, then starting to manage it. Go. So we're getting these fed through that we need. First is going to be our 24 pin main. There we go. Cable there. Next is going to be our dual EPS. Put these two in and then run the cables respectively. So there's not a lot of back stuff from the back here. Two minutes running coming together. You can see it on the back here. Looking pretty good so far. Next we have to work on our fans. We have three top fans here to do. All right, one. Bump part to me, all the daisy chaining we have to do on this one uh, today, River. Two more in and we're done with the fans. And on to the wiring. We have a lot of fans to wire in now, chat. Probably are the RGB in, and we're gonna go on with the, uh, the cooler. Do our thermal paste. There it is. Tower cooler is nice. Seven heat pipes. Holy cow. This is gonna get cool a lot. Seven heat pipes on a tower cooler is nuts. That's really sturdy. It's good to see. There you go, all clipped in, there you go. Looks good. Let's get our next fan all in there. Let me get the cables together really quick. Just feed them through, and then I'm gonna check on that SATA for you. Time for the GPU. Get this GPU out today, a big boy box. 4070 Super today, chat. Blacked out 4070 Super founders with this setup is real nice, Ricky Bobby. There it is. It's gonna look really good with this build. And we go with this little 40, I'm gonna say little, but it's a beautiful little Flounders 4070 Super. There you go, here's the, here's the thunk. Power cable, nice and secure. All right, I'm gonna put this sideways. Maybe the rear cable manager be so I can work on the, the, the wiring for this. I think we're gonna go up. You guys ready to light this bad boy up? Guys, thanks for coming in and liking another video here on YouTube. Make sure you hit that like button to help us with the algorithm. Make sure people find us and see all the beautiful PCs we build. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button as well. Remember, we build these systems live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday over on our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash stints. Come on over, hang out, chat it up with us, watch us build beautiful PCs for everybody in the community. And remember, let's go.